On this tutorial, I will be explaining about render settings. First, let me explain about IPR render. You have two options to look at the render while working. Inside render, you can find Radiant Pro Render. By clicking here, you will be able to check your render without clicking on the final render button. This is a good feature for anyone without a dual monitor. You can also check IPR render by clicking on the IPR render icon on Maya's default. You can use this windows to render accurately for a final result. Now let's get to the main part. For the render settings, inside system tab, you have the option to choose CPU or GPU. If you have multiple GPU installed, you can choose to render with two or more. Although, I would not recommend using two different manufacturer GPU. For the sampling, there's not that much to set up. Max sample and adaptive sampling is where you will most likely be adjusting. Sampling on ProRender is an iteration calculation, so you will be able to check your render in real time while working. The higher the number is, the less noise you will have on the final render. Adaptive sampling is where it will stop calculating the part of the pixel when they do not notice any noise. So the render will be faster with it. Since ProRender is an iteration calculation, it will render everything in real time, but you are able to enable tile rendering, which you can lower the sampling to render. Anti-alias are here inside the sampling tab. In the default, they show better quality, but if you want to change them, you can change them here. Below, there are max ray depths, which is a maximum of the ray depth that has to be applied on one part of the layer. Ray epsilon, this is a limit for the ray bounce from the camera. If it's set to default, any object far from the camera will have an artifact which is something we do not want to see on the final render. So, change this to a higher parameter to remove the artifact. Inside the effects tab, you can add motion blur on the final image or denoise the render image, and also tone mapping in this menu. For AOV, you can add check on what AOV you need for the final render. After selecting, Click on the render image to save the AOV and final render. That'll be all for this part of the tutorial. On the next tutorial, we'll be looking at materials.